you on a Sunday morning. Worship me now, God. Amen. I love this beach. It's not too crowded. And, uh, but it's the wind, the breeze, and the wind. As you know, I sweat a lot. So maybe today I won't sweat as much. Amen. But uh, it's uh, great uh, to get being back uh, from uh, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, seeing my family and uh, being able to encourage them uh, through a sad time, my stepdad dying. And, uh, but uh, in spite of that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're hanging on, they're strong. And uh, we continue to pray for my family because there are many of them that need to be saved. Amen. Uh, today's title of my lesson is Make Every Effort. Make every effort, amen. amen. Let's go ahead and dive into the lesson. Let's open your Bibles to Luke chapter 13. Starting in verse 22. Luke chapter 13, verse 22. not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate, we drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he replied, I don't know you or where you come from me. Come from, away from me, all you evildoers. He says, there will be weeping. There, there will be gnashing of teeth. When we see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets of the kingdom of God. But you yourselves, thrown out, people will come from the east the west, the north, the south, and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, <coughs> there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. You know, here the Bible tells us that there is a very narrow door, but there's also a broad door. But there is a narrow door. What is the narrow door? It's the entrance to heaven, salvation, eternal life, an exciting life, a new birth, an entrance to the kingdom of God. What is it that makes the narrow way so narrow? The many will try to enter in and will be blocked. They will be blocked. Close your eyes for a moment and think of these things. The man knocks on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Hello, let me in. Let me in. Hey, I know you. Jesus, I know you. Let me in. I've been faithful for 30 years. 30 years in the kingdom of God. in a church for 15 years. I had people in my home. I fed them beans and rice all the time. It was great. You know, I gave my tithe every week. Every week I gave my tithe. Hey, let me in. Please let me in. Sorry. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I don't know you. Where do you come from? Hey, you remember me? You remember me? Yes, yes, remember me? You preached in our streets. Remember, I was 
guy who gave my tithe every Sunday. I was a guy that came to every midweek service. I was a guy who did our prayer walk and, and, and who did all these social events. And I invited lots of people about, you remember me? Sorry, sir. Sorry, man. I never knew you. You never knew me. I never knew you. You don't remember me. He says to me, right away, you evil. Can you imagine giving everything that you really possibly think that you can get? Everything. You serve your works. Your works. told them to do it. They serve because they want an entrance, the entrance into heaven, but without the real sacrifice. <coughs> the real sacrifice. It's the heart that says, I'm going to get in Bible studies with people because I love them. It's the heart that says, I'm going to go door knocking and meet my neighbors and I'm going to ask for money. Because every dollar accounts for a lost soul. It's, it's coming together. Going the extra mile for someone's hurting. Someone who's starving and hurting for the rest of God. But you're not willing to lift your finger up and go and meet that need. It's that heart that when you're chosen. the heart. Jesus was all about 
about you dealing with the heart. Are you dealing with your own heart right now? Are you going through things in your heart and you're wrestling with life right now? You're saying, God, why is this happening to me? Why is this, why am I going through these pains and struggles? Well, you're going through these pains and struggles because God wants you to seek Him. And until you are totally surrendered, you surrendered your life, your life is a living sacrifice, He's going to keep coming after you. Until you are totally surrendered to Him. It's hard to get in to the kingdom of God. It's hard to get in and have salvation. It's demanding of your time. It's demanding of total commitment to God and following Jesus. It takes great humility. It takes great selflessness. It takes a willingness to lay down your life for your brother and your sister. The question I have for you, <coughs> are you willing to lay down your life? Are you willing to sweat tears and blood for the sake of the mission? For the sake of our brothers and sisters on the mission field who barely are able to eat a meal? Who cannot go to sit on the toilet the way you sit on the toilet? They have to have a hole in the ground. Who don't have electricity like you have electricity? Who don't have internet? And all the gadgets and things that we have, which those aren't mean anything, to live on the richest country in the world. Guys, brothers and sisters, we ought to be grateful for what you have. Amen. And grateful to be able to have the privilege and honor to serve our brothers and sisters and our foreign missions. It's tough, guys. It's a struggle. But if you don't struggle, you don't grow. That's right. It's a victory in being able to have flat like I do. Okay, bro. Okay? And that victory is to be able to get the flab off. All right. It's a victory. Yes, I have flab in this tight shirt, and I think I'm kind of crazy for wearing it. Oh, That's okay. <laughs> But you know what? It's a victory in getting the flab off. Amen. And seeing the victory. Same way it's a victory. And struggling. And meeting the needs of the people. And watching the smiles of their faces. Watching their kids happy. Watching marriages soar like an eagle. Watching people who have been on drugs for years turn around and be able to have families, to be able to have kids like they once dreamed as they were growing up. This is what you are a part of. This is the vision. This is the dream that in our churches is happening all over the world. Sadly, many who call themselves Christians in this world aren't willing to deny themselves at times and put Jesus first. Why? Your own ideas, your personal agenda oversees God's agenda. That's why in Matthew 15, Jesus told you hypocrites, you honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. <coughs> These people worship me in vain. They're teachers of rules taught by men. See, brothers and sisters, if your agenda oversees the agenda of God, then you're going in the wrong direction. It's got to be Matthew 6.33, but seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. If there's one area that is lacking, and you're not seeking the kingdom first. And you're not 100% behind the direction of God and his kingdom and his church. Then you're in trouble. Yeah. You will continue to struggle. Yeah. You will continue to be sad. 
You will continue to hide behind the curtains. You'll continue to be push people away from your life. Wow. If you don't open your heart wide, this is no joke. Open your heart wide and say, what do I need to do to give to God unconditionally? If that's not the heart, guys, then maybe you, maybe, perhaps, you are the ones that when you go, that Jesus, you go knocking on the door, he may very well say to you, I don't know you, I never knew you. Because your agenda, your personal vendetta, took precedence over the kingdom of God. Wow. And if you take this for one minute as a joke, it may not happen this year. It may not happen next year. But if you stay in that way, on, time is going to speak for itself. Right. See, brothers and sisters, I think one of the biggest things that I think that we all need to have is a fear of God. Amen. There are so many disciples all over the world who struggle with the fear of God. These people didn't struggle with the fear of God. If they struggled with the fear of God, Jesus would knock on the door. They would knock on the door for Jesus, and he would open the door and welcome them in. You get the picture here. They didn't welcome him in because they did not have a fear of God. What is the fear of God? Understanding that everything that you do and that I do, it's all about God. He is the God who can give life and take life away. That's the fear of God. I'm not talking a fear that lightning bolt coming from heaven is striking you. I'm talking about you and I are in awe of God. And I'm going to do whatever it takes in God's kingdom to meet the needs of the people. Because wasn't that, what, wasn't that what Jesus' life was about? His life was about seeking and saving the lost. Has that been your focus this week? Seeking and saving the lost? Are you in Bible studies? Is there someone you're in Bible studies with? Is there someone you're giving your whole life into? Does someone have to call you and say, Hey, call Joe. Call Mary. Call Sue. Call Michael. Call Victoria. Call Justin. Call Michael. Call Susan. Does someone have to tell you to call them? Or is it part of your heart? Does someone have to tell you, Hey, why don't you invite Neil over to your house? Why don't you invite Justin over to your house? Feed him some food. Do a Bible study with them. Or is it, man, I, I love this guy. I want to get to know him. I want to get to know her life. I want to get to know their kids. I want to get to know their history. I want them to get to know me. I want to be the best friends that I could be with that person. See, guys, you got to have a fear of God. Mind, your soul, and your strength. You see, there were times where challenging times where Elizabeth and I, in 2008, we'd moved from Portland, Oregon, and uh, things weren't going so well in our fellowships around the world. There was a divide. So we decided to move in Orlando, Orlando, 2008. And uh, we didn't know exactly. We knew that we needed to go there and make something happen. So we, we moved there. We got settled. We said we got to make something happen. There are lots of people, lots of old souls around. So Elizabeth and I were two kids. We went to the park every day. I was working at a, a shoe store as a... a Custom, selling custom made orthotics and uh, we would go to the park and we would share our faith and meet people we started Bible discussion, why? because we knew that something had to happen something had to happen if we are going to be in Orlando in 2008 so we did that month after month after month year after year after year out of that came 30 disciples and those 30 disciples multiplied as another team came down to join us. So from Orlando, 
it then became Gainesville. Gainesville church planted. From Gainesville became Houston. From Houston became Tampa. From Tampa has now become Miami. But it took hard work. It took struggle. There were times that we felt like and tempted that we wanted to give up. We said, no way. No way. We've got to keep going. So now, there are five churches just from the God planted on our heart to go to a city to meet needs with very little resources. God wants to bless your life the same way. You're no different than Elizabeth and I with the power of God on your side. Amen. Yep. Point number two. <laughs> Make every effort to stay on the mission field. Come on, bro. You know, verse 22. The Bible says, a narrow door. You know, back in the 90s, on the Lower East Side, in our form of fellowship, <coughs> we would go in our ministry there, five of us, in a year and a half, grew from five to 75 people. And we decided, you know what, we're going to take the Lower East Side, and we're going to hit every avenue. Avenue A, Avenue B, Avenue C, and Avenue D. And we're just going to go all the way up about 10 blocks, and we're going to share with everybody. Yeah. And we had a party right afterward. This was in the afternoon. This was probably about 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And after we shared, we all came back, and we had this big party on the third floor. It's where Elizabeth and her roommates used to live, down on the Lower East Side. And it was amazing. On the third floor, we had a band on top of the roof, rooftop. On the second floor, we had a, a, a dance party. And on the third, first floor, we had food. So we had three floors. And it was awesome because those people that we invited, mobs of people had come in. And they were satisfied. They got to meet people. It took hard work. It took sacrifice. It took planning. See, we got to go through the towns and streets, our neighborhoods, to reach to these brothers and sisters. It takes tireless hours of work to be able to produce. It takes investing in people like never before. Who are you investing in? Who are you becoming best friends with? See, it's good that we're good friends because the Bible says in John 13, 34, 35, it tells us that people will know that we're disciples by our love for one another. Right? And that's good that we got that down. But now, we need to love our neighbor as ourselves. Yep. And I really believe that we miss that sometimes, guys. It's because maybe you're a little timid and going to someone who's you don't know and telling them good news about Jesus. Maybe it's because that you look at your self-image and who you are. You lack confidence in who you are. And because you lack confidence in who you are and what talents and gifts that God has given you and you don't see it clearly. You don't see it clearly. 
clearly that you hold yourself back from giving to people who are less fortunate than you are. Come on, Anthony. See, you guys know the truth. There are people who don't know the truth. And it's up to us to make it happen. That's right. Guys, there is a great need. There is a great need for this lost world. It's all good. There is a great need. There are people who are dying every day in our third world countries. Different diseases that happen just because of the environment they're in. They, don't, they can't get a bottle of water and drink it. They have to find their water from the rivers. From leftovers of other people. Find it on the street. Empty bottles. Bottles with maybe with the backwash that's in the bottle. How does that make you feel? I know that's disgusting and gross. But that's the only way I can paint the visual for you. So that you understand the great need. See, there's a narrow door. We all want to enter the narrow door. Without entering that narrow door, it's a sad, sad misery of life. Can you envision Tampa planting one church every two years? Every two years you plant a church. That's what we need. This little church, planting a church every two years. Let's do it. That's only going to happen if we meet people, we share the gospel, and we continue to teach people as the Bible commands us in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Yeah, teach on. them to obey everything. He says, and surely I will always be with you to the very end of the age. Yeah, that's right. Has your commitment level grown or have you shrunk back? The mission to bring people to Christ has not stopped and it will never stop. There is hope for everyone. And we've got to understand and see it through the eyes of Jesus that there is hope for everyone. And on verse 29, people will come from the east, the west and north and south, and they will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Guys, you got to envision it. You got to envision it knocking on the door. Jesus opening the door. And he letting you in. And all that food that you have desired, all the delicacies that you enjoy, the chocolate cake, the butter pecan ice cream, the cheesecake you desire, the big steak that you just love. Medium rare for some of you. Twice big, mom. You know, you just did the mashed potatoes with all kinds of gooey butter. Lots of butter. Cholesterol. Heart breaking. Eat your arteries up. All those things, right? All the delicacies of the bread you eat that turns into sugar. All those things, right? The bread. You desire everything you desire, it's going to be in heaven. But see, we don't reach, we don't think about how awesome heaven is going to be. No more bills. The word bills bills won't even be in your vocabulary. It will be gone. History. You won't remember the bills anymore. You won't remember any of those times that your car broke down. You won't remember those times that gas, you ran out of gas because you didn't have dollars to put the money in to get your gasoline. Oh, come on. You, know, you got to catch a vision for heaven. That's that narrow door. You got to see it. You got to visualize it. The people from come from all over the world. Maybe you will see your friends. Hey, Will Davenport, I remember you in heaven. Now, the Bible says we won't remember each other. I hope we remember each other somehow. But, you know, well, that's, that's up to, you know, that's up to God. We, you know, I mean, we think we might be different. But who knows? Oh, Lord. We won't remember any of that stupid stuff, guys, right? No, all the hey, dumb stuff man. you've done. You owe me five dollars. All the stupid arguments. All the bitterness. You know, all the fights you had in your heart. In all the rebellion, none of that stuff will be remembered. 
None of that stuff will be remembered. You gotta admit it. There's hope for everyone. Never have to worry about gaining weight. Everybody will be fit. Come on. <laughs> Everybody will be fit. Everybody. I think your whole body's gonna change. You don't have to worry about muscles or any of that stuff. It's gonna be awesome. You don't even have to worry about makeup because you're so secure in the Lord. Come on. Isaiah. I mean, guys, you gotta catch a vision for this. You never have to go to the toilet. <laughs> and you don't have to open a door and smell somebody else's gunk. You know what I mean? I mean, God is gonna be incredible. That's where you go. Incredible. That's where you go. I just want you guys to catch a vision, you guys. See, the brothers are laughing because they go through that every day, see? <laughs> but, uh, but hey, I want to say this, guys. I want you to know I appreciate the hard work in the church. Uh, you guys have been some of the most sacrificial uh, men and women on the planet. You know, the uh, movement has asked us to uh, send just a brief synopsis of... A, a brief synopsis. synopsis. A brief summary. Summary. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, what we were doing. And for us, it was hard to be brief. We had a list of about 20 things we sent them. And I looked at that list and I go, wow. Single mom selling waters. Brothers and sisters door knocking. Car washes, bank sales, garage sales, giving up their income tax money. All those things. When the world looks at us, they think, you guys are lunatics. You are lunatics. You know what? We are lunatics. Because we understand the mission. I'm proud of you guys. Some of you guys have been with us for three, four, God has blessed us in many ways, and we cannot forget it. We must be thankful in what God is doing for your lives and for the brothers and sisters around the world. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, you don't need to turn there, but the Bible says, Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain. I think sometimes we forget that. All the hard work, all the bake sales, the garage sales, the getting in Bible studies with people early in the morning, in the afternoon, late night, after midnight, that's who we are. Is it worth it? Yes, it's worth it. Hebrews 10, 23, verse 25, the Bible says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on to much love and good deeds. Here's the clincher. Let us not give it up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. He says, guys, we can't swerve to the right, to the left. We've got to stay focused. We've got to take our eyes and focus them on Jesus, not on our problems, not on our circumstances, not on the lack of things that we don't have. Because God will provide if you're faithful and you believe. His faithful ones will thrive like an eagle. We've got to make every effort to enter through the narrow gate. Point number three, last point. Make every effort to keep away from the broad road. Make every effort to keep away 
from the broad road. I think everybody struggles with the broad road sometimes. Because we are entrapped. We are pulled and tugged by the world. Amen. We desire what the world has. You want the 70 inch TV, right? You want the surround sound. Now I got a 55 inch. I really do want a 70 inch one. But I know that's not going to get me to heaven. All right? You want to have the big house, right? Yeah. You want to have the nice car and all that stuff. That's what we, we want to have the nice cell phone, right? We want the we want the iPhone 8, 10, 15 when it comes, right? <laughs> that cost you at that point, it'll cost you fifteen, two thousand dollars. And you would sacrifice paying your bills to get that phone. <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Guys, I don't understand why people are so driven to these gadgets and gadgets and they can't pay their bills. Wow. You know, you got cities like Miami. One brother was telling me, he says, listen, in Miami it's all about luxury. They drive around in Hummers, but they live in a shack. All their money goes into luxury. But if you look at their home, it's like you wouldn't want to go in there. It's all about status. Brother was telling me recently. But see, that's what the world does. That's the broad world. world. You, you, get, you grab whatever you can get a hold of. Because you're insecure, you don't have anything to live for, you got to grab something. But I want to tell you, there is something to live for. Jesus Christ crucified. He is the only hope that any of you we have together. He is the only hope for you individually. And collectively, he is the only hope for us in order to get the Tampa Bay International Christian Church moving and going, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. What makes the wide door broad? What does it represent? It's the entrance to sin, miserable life, destruction, and hell. Why would anyone desire a miserable, destructible life? Why? Why would you desire to live a miserable life? It's a path of fault. Self-gratification. It looks so attractive, doesn't it? It looks so attractive, right? You come and you see the million dollar home. You can do whatever you want to do. Right? You love the riches. But guys, I have to tell you, being a professional dancer back in the day, I would never say I was a millionaire, but I had a good time and good life. And there was nothing but miserable, miserable in that lifestyle. Miserable. Unhappiness. Loneliness. It brought me to a point where I was like, God, why am I here? I look in the mirror and I go, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? I couldn't think of what my purpose was. I knew it was, wasn't just going on stage, performing for thousands of people, then coming home, looking in the mirror, and there's sadness. All of a sudden, I was joyful. I was people clap. And I come home, and it's reality. Measure. I don't know where you are in your life today. Maybe you're feeling these things. Maybe you're not a worshiper of a God. Maybe you, every now and then, you'll turn on a TV, you'll listen to a televangelist. Maybe every now and then you'll turn your radio on and listen to a sermon, I don't know. But I want to encourage you to take investigate a lot deeper. 
Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. There's this thing called the Bible. This is a life changer. If one applies it to their lives. Amen. It will turn your life right side up because you're upside down in your sin. It changed my life. A guy who come out of the ghetto, who got out of the ghetto and became something. Became somebody. It was very humbling and sobering, guys. Looking at my hometown. I went through the ghettos of my hometown. And uh, I remember all the guys and people sitting on the corners. They were sitting on the corners drinking wine, Thunderbird, just like I remember. And you know, it's interesting. They seemed like they were having a good time. They were having a good time being on the corners. But I know the lifestyle. I know what it's like out there. It was saddening. It really saddened me. Because I looked around and I got, most of these people are not going to live for another. They may not live tomorrow. And that's all of us. But that means some of these people may not have a long life because of the way they've lived their lives. It really saddened me. I saw things as I was going through the ghetto. And I was like, wow. Like, it, it almost was like foreign to me because I'd been out of it for so long. Yeah. It was like, wow. Like, it was, it was almost like I remember this, but I'm so far removed from this that it was almost like, wow, I've, I've forgotten where I come from. Yeah. Come on, Anthony. I was like, wow. And it also, it, it also showed me too I haven't been great. Come on, bro. Come on, Anthony. Okay. I haven't been great at loving my family. time. Got to spend some great quality time with my mother. Apologize to her. For not being a great son. And spending the quality time that I need to spend with her. There have been times where you know, I I make a, make a card to center. I get distracted, and I never get that card tour. Just things like that. And so I had some time to, to think about it and evaluate my relationship with my biological family. And I made decisions that I'm gonna be different. This was an element of my life that uh, I've taken for granted. And I don't wanna do that anymore. Why? Because there's a broad road. And everything I have, I want to give to them. I want to give to this lost world. Because without what God has given me, there is no hope for this world. Without you and I working collectively together and seeing things come to fruition and winning this world over. being on 
on Jesus. We've got to make every effort to enter through that narrow gate, brothers and sisters. How much effort? Every effort. All consumed. First priority. Most important. It should be obvious to all. Nothing else is more important than seeking the kingdom of God. Again, not your own desires, your own wants. Fulfill your own life, but fulfilling the desires and dream of God. Did you make every effort? Have you made every effort to go after your special missions? What kind of effort would you make if you lost your child or your sibling? You would do everything in your power to find that child or that sibling, right? right yep. Well, guess what? Every man and woman is a child of God. It's up to us who are disciples to go after the people, Come on. love the people, give to the people, sacrifice your life for the people who desire to love God. Amen. Don't be deceived about the worth of the narrow road. Don't be deceived about how hard it is to find that narrow road. Make every effort to enter through that narrow gate. To God be 